it's really hard to believe that July is already here. And with first Wednesday of July, we also have a new release of Home Assistant, Home Assistant 2024.7. Today we are going to look at what's new and what's hot in the July release. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Since this video is recorded a couple of days before the official or final release of Home Assistant, there may be some changes in this Beta 5 or after this Beta 5 that may end up in Home Assistant or at the last minute get pulled out of the July release. There are probably gonna be a couple of additional beta releases, but since I have to edit the video and also release it a day early for the YouTube channel members, I have to select on a cut date and record video based on a specific beta version. But that's not all in regard to beta release. You now have more information on how you can join, where you can get information, how to report issues, etc. If you're up to it, don't forget to join the beta channel in Home Assistant, pull the latest beta and test it on your system. Remember, you should not be actually pulling the beta release in your main system, so it's recommended that you have at least one spare system where you can test such things. If you are using sections in UI, you know that this is a great improvement if you compare it on how traditionally UI was handled, positioning, layers, width, height, etc. But this release brings additional changes and improvements, and this one is really neat. One thing you probably had issues with is the sizing of each of the tiles or components on your UI. Well, there is a new functionality for that. If you edit them, for example, click on this one here, we can now select layout. According to the default setting, this one is one line high and four columns across, but you can shrink it and make it, for example, two lines. Click save and now this card looks like this. If you want to reset it, just click on reset button and it will return to the original form. Since not every card, especially cards made through the HACS or implemented through HACS, are currently supporting this functionality, if you are using HACS front-end components, you may have issues because the cards don't automatically format according to the new size. This is something that has to be implemented in each of the hacks front-end components by itself and hopefully the authors will quickly jump to it and update their components. If we look at the map, layout, you see that this is the original size. We can make it smaller so that you have room for other components to be right beside it. Or for these lights, you can make them smaller, wider, or bigger overall. It's all up to you. Since, as I've said, not all components support this, you will have to play with it and see what of your current cards support them and what cards are still not supporting them. By the time this release is official, I know that at least some of the cards will be updated and will support this functionality. This is a third release in a row that brings us improvements to data tables. And this one is really neat, especially if you want to customize not just your UI, traditional UI, but also data tables. If we click on the cogwheel in the upper right corner, you have option to disable or arrange some of the components. For example, you can disable the manufacturer name, area, and the battery state of the device. And you can also move integration in front of model. This is really neat if you want to customize your display, but also if you're using this on, for example, your tablet or mobile phone, where the screen size is commodity and some of the information is actually not needed. This will make it much easier for you to use data tables. I'm not using blueprints myself, but I know that a lot of people are creating and also using blueprint components. But the issue sometimes you may have with blueprint components is that 95% of the functionality of the component is great, but you want to modify something. Well, there is a way to do it now. For example, if I click on this blueprint component and click on three dots and take control, you will present it with a screen that tells you that you can take control of the component. What does it mean? It means that this blueprint will be converted to the automation. And by doing that, you will be also able to customize that automation through automation editor. But also note one additional thing. If the original blueprint component is changed, you cannot simply update it by using update command. No, 
you will have to import it once again and then once again take control of it and based on that customize it to your liking. So you can only do this one way by taking control of the blueprint and there is no way currently and as far as I know from talks with devs or in the near future that you will be able to create blueprint out of automation. This is one way road. Let's take control and this is how the blueprint looks if you turn it in automation. You can of course also see it and edit it in the YAML code too. This is something that I know a lot of you will appreciate and will be using in future. But I must repeat once again, remember that when you take control of the blueprint, convert it to automation, you will not be able to get it back to blueprint. But besides those changes, there are also new integrations. You now have option to hook up Aquacell to Home Assistant for monitoring your water softener, Ista Echo Trend to monitor your heating, hot water and water consumption, Mealy for managing your recipes and the meal planner, and Noki or Gnocchi or whatever it is called to hook up this very expensive device to Home Assistant where you can make any surface work as a button or something. But with each release, besides just new integrations, we also have a lot of improvements to existing integrations. This time these are the Meta integration, Android TV, Full Kiosk Browser, Unified Protect integration, Reolink integration, and Reolink has really been getting a lot of love in last couple of months, Bank and Olufsen, and Nanolith integration too. But each time, besides new integrations and improvement to other integrations that you read in release notes, there are also a lot of additional updates and improvements that do not end up in the documentation. This time we have really a lot of them. Each integration has its own level. Platinum is the highest level of integration for Home Assistant. While we are still working on the same principles of how they are classified, and yes, there will be changes, but not so soon to all of the integrations and how they are actually classified, this month ESP Home, Pilot and Teslemetry have reached the highest platinum level of the integration. Plus, some more integrations have been added to the UI configuration. That means that in future, if you want to add any of these integrations, you will not be needing to do YAML configuration for them. Instead, you can do it directly from the integrations menu. And these are the feed reader, generic hygrostat, generic thermostat, intergas in comfort, music player dimmer, one time passwords, pilot, and statistics. Unify Circuit has been deprecated with the 2024.5 release and now has been removed from Home Assistant. And you probably have seen stream in regard to ESP Home. There were a couple of changes on how updates can be pushed, where they can be provided, host, etc. So between Home Assistant and ESP Home, there are changes that will help those two work together much tighter. But there are still some other noteworthy changes for this release. For example, the first one is the ability to change the username in Home Assistant, which was not possible before. Then one neat functionality that I really loved when it was announced and I did fix a couple of my errors that I had in my system is the ability for Home Assistant to raise repair issues in regard to automations. Previously in the list of automations, those mark with, I believe, red sign were the ones that were not working correctly. But now, besides just that list and that icon, you will also get the repair list item in the repairs list. And that will make it much easier for you to track where you have issues and also to know that you have issues. Previously, by default, home zone or home assistant was 100 meters. And there was a way to change that by using customize.yaml file and do it by hand. But now you can also check that directly from home assistant. It works the same way as with any zone, you just increase it by using the slider or directly type the number and click update. And for the end, as always, don't forget to check the backward incompatible changes. This list tells you what has been changed, removed or what works differently than it used to work before. For example, as far as authentication goes, the old method has been deprecated and now has been removed. If you are unlucky one to have BNW, then you are also unlucky and will have to change to lowercase state values. Logitech has killed Harmony products and with this release we are saying bye bye to switch entities that have actually been deprecated since the 2024.1 release. And if you are using Z-Wave, 
Besides just paying for very expensive products, this release will force you to update your Z-Wave JS server to the newest version. So what are your thoughts about the July release of Home Assistant? Is it any good? Bad? Is it a major release? Minor release? What are your favorite things here? Or what are the changes that you don't appreciate or don't like? And by the way, if you remember, two releases ago we were about to have changes to the authentication, where you can block access, give URLs for logins, etc, etc. Some of you are still wondering what's going on with that. It's still in the works. There are some new changes or new implementations for this functionality and it will take at least a couple more months. So just sit tight and it will be added to Home Assistant. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube knows that this is a good video and it will then recommend it to more people. Also while you are already there check that you are subscribed, if not click on subscribe button so you don't miss on future video updates and of course the streams. And before I end up the video I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked and commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks. And as always, I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.